Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name's Jack. Today we are building all three of the Wave 3 Star Wars buildable figures. That is Drood Amway, Baze Malbus, and the Scarif Trooper. I know a lot of people just call this guy the Sand Trooper. And anyways, that's who we're going to start off with first. This set is recommended for ages 7 to 14. It is set number 75523 and it has 89 pieces. It sells for about 25 bucks in the States. On the back you can see a better look at this guy. He also comes with a spring-loaded shot, that's a spring-loaded shooter, and let's get this thing open. All right, so inside the box, there's just two bags, one set of manuals, and these cloth pieces here. This is gonna be going around the waist of the Scarif Trooper. Let's get started. So here's the first guy, the Scarif Trooper. Gotta say the detailing on this soldier is very, very nice. The printing for the chest and especially the printing on the headpiece really makes this character feel a bit more complete. And I also like that the sort of worn away detailing on the helmet is actually a series of a bunch of tiny little dots. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to go with that. It feels like sort of a throwback to an older print style, but for some reason it makes me feel like this guy is just a bit more sort of associated with sand. It is sort of like a sandy under tone on the helmet and that's really just a nice detail that they decided to include. Both the arms are colored differently which is kind of a unique detail for any kind of trooper. Well considering he's not a command trooper he's just got a blue shoulder pauldron on one side with a matching forearm that is also in the same blue with some printing down there. Also a bit more of that sort of spotted printing just at the bottom of the cuff there. And then no printing on the other side but you can see he does have a red arm. I suppose the thing around his waist you could call a short camera or something something like that. You can see printing for some extra ammo belts. And other than that, it's just kind of a color variation between uh, brown and tan. The color juxtaposes nicely against the dark brown for the thighs. And then we have some sort of mechanical or just slightly more detailed armor that goes down onto the shins, which we normally don't get for these kinds of troopers. In terms of all the extra detailing, I think slightly more went into producing this particular Scarif Trooper, as opposed to maybe the First Order Stormtrooper or some of the other guys that we've gotten in the past. The mold, of course, is super excellent for the helmet and I think it's one of the strongest features of any of the buildable figs. And let's see um, any other unique features. The gun is also a little bit more unique than the average gun that we get from previous guys. It's got a single spring loaded shot with extra ammo attached to the side and this time we have a stud gun that is attached on the bottom and it's very much in the place like where you might have a grenade launcher attached to the bottom of an assault rifle or something like that. And so that's kind of a nice tiny little extra added feature though this thing isn't going to have the ability to knock over any buildable figure, it's just kind of an extra little weapon add-on. I think it actually fits really well within the build, so that works out nicely. And you can see it looks like he's got maybe an extra scope or possibly an extra flashlight on the side. So the weapon is a little bit more detailed, the printing on the body is a bit more detailed than uh, guys we've gotten in the past, and in general I just like the look of the Sand Trooper, sorry, Scarab Trooper. Alright, so that's it for the first review, let's check out the next guy, Zeeny Meeny Miny Mo. I'm a big fan of Donnie Yen, so let's do Trude Imwe next. The building age recommendation is 8 to 14, which means it is slightly more difficult, or it should be more difficult than the Scarif Trooper that we just did. The set number is 75524, and it has 87 pieces, one of the smallest part counts that we get for any buildable figure out of any of the waves. Um, he comes with a gigantic crossbow with some golden end pieces, which I am looking forward to getting. And uh, yeah, he's a really cool character, and let's get the set open. All right, so the box includes, once again, two bags. Well, technically three, and this is the cloth piece that goes around his legs. It's actual cloth, which is really, really nice. One single manual, and we are starting.
right, so Chirrut Umwe is done, and I'm pleasantly surprised with the build. I suppose the build style was just a little bit more clever, a little bit more complicated, so that's why they had the slightly higher age recommendation build, but it really is on the same level as uh, any of the buildable figs. I thought one of the more clever attachment pieces was using a wheel well piece to go around the back of the neck. It kind of solidify the way these buildable pieces kind of all attach together, and it's just sort of a commonplace part used in a very unique way. The printing is, of course, excellent on the body. It doesn't look quite as worn away or as weathered as the Scarif Trooper, which I don't like quite as much, but I gotta say my favorite print, I think probably of this wave, is on Shroot and Way, and that is the print that goes onto his forearm here. It's highly detailed and just kind of looks mechanical and can be very ambiguous, easy to put onto any sort of Lego custom build in the future. Very useful part there. And we also get these nice golden strips that attach to the crossbow. By the way, the crossbow has a great function. The trigger is activated, not like the standard triggers from the other rifles, but instead we have this little golden uh, cross piece right here. And you just push that down and that's what shoots it out. But you also have the ability to sort of pull the drawstring back on the bow. It doesn't really affect the way it shoots, but this is, once again, this is a crossbow, but that's just a really nice play feature that I know a lot of people uh, would definitely appreciate, especially having this kind of weapon. The cloth piece that goes around his waist is really, really nice. I don't know if it's quite as soft as the soft cloth capes that we get on some of the minifigs, but it certainly doesn't feel stiff like some of the older stuff that we got in the past. The mold for the head is always going to look a little bit weird, I think, with uh, the human features instead of just the helmets. The helmets always look better, in my opinion. But as far as molded heads go, uh, I think the Donnie Yen head here for Trude and Wei actually looks all right. The one thing that I think is missing from this character, and I'm sure a lot of people have said before, is that uh, Trude and Wei is missing his staff. I feel like he used that a lot more in the movie than this uh, crossbow, and instead of having his staff as an alternate weapon on his back, it's just a single extra shot. I can understand um, Lego wanting to use a weapon that Trude and Wei actually shoots because that's more fun as a toy, I think, for younger kids, but I feel like the more iconic feature of this character certainly was the staff, and it definitely feels like this thing is just a little bit incomplete because he doesn't come with it. I'm sure a lot of people have actually made a version of his staff already and attached it to his back, and I'm sure it'd be very easy to make a staff if that's indeed what you wanted to do with this guy. Altogether, I am pretty happy with him though, so let's move on. And by move on, I mean let's move to his partner in crime so to speak. Uh, this is Baze Malbus, and he's got a lot of pieces. He has an age recommendation of 9 to 14, so technically he should be the most difficult out of any of these buildable figures to make. He is set number 75525, and he's got 148 pieces. That is like 50 or 60 more pieces than the other two guys that we built. So there's a lot more going on for this guy. I have a feeling it's going to be the gun and the pack that goes onto his back, which you kind of get a look here. Anyways, might as well just build it so you get a better idea. All right, so the box comes with two bags. They definitely feel a little bit bigger. We've got a couple of these tube pieces, and unfortunately there are stickers this time. I wasn't expecting there to be stickers, but there they are. We got the instruction manuals, and let's get the last one going.
So here is Baze Malbus, and he really does feel like a lot more pieces. He is a bit taller, and he's also a lot more armored up. You can see he's got an extra build that kind of wraps cleverly around from the back and then onto the front. It rests there a little bit loosely, kind of like how the shoulder pauldrons rest. They're kind of on these extra flaps, and they're a little bit loose, but it makes the character look a little bit bigger and a little bit beefier, which he is in the movie. I thought the build for the gun was going to be a bit crazier looking because, uh, I mean, he's got this huge pack but really the gun build is a uh, smaller than that of the scarif trooper and even slightly less detailed it functions just the same way pretty much all of these blaster rifles do with a spring-loaded shot in the center but you can see it is attached by this hose piece which comes onto this big sort of barrel that is uh, on his back here you can see some darker cylinders that are on the inside of the barrel and he has this sort of antenna piece that is coming out on the other side. Everything here feels pretty simple. And the one thing that I thought might have been a problem is he uh, maybe would have been a little bit off balance with the extra weight, but it doesn't really seem to affect him. Now Baze does have some exclusive prints, but they're just these prints down here by his uh, right shin, both the print on the shin itself and the knee pad that goes there. Very simple stuff, relatively nice. And then the rest of the detailing here is all sticker stuff. So so it's sticker detailing on the chest piece and those uh, brown belts. I do like the build for the brown belts. It just would have been nice if they were printed. And then the detailing at the bottom of that red armor is also stickers as well as that little V towards the top. Generally speaking, I don't think it is too bad. It's just odd that he's the only one that doesn't have just printing. The mold for his face is all right. Once again, it's always weird having a human kind of face, but I do think it is worth pointing out that they did include some of the scars or just a single scar under the cheek as an actual part of the mold. There's no printing there that shows that scar, but close up you definitely can see that the mold was intentionally kind of banged out just a little bit to show the scar. That is a very nice attention to detail, and if you were buying any of these figures just for the parts, remember this one has quite a few more parts, but I suppose all these figures have such unique pieces that if you are buying these guys for the pieces, you probably have a certain build in mind. Anyways, I do think he is a good figure overall. Okay, so that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And if you want to buy any of these buildable figs, I have left links in the video description below. All right, that's it. See you next time at Brickfall.